Hello, thank you so much for clicking this video today. I really appreciate it. We just saw Bitcoin get launched on the Cardano blockchain and it seems like we're seeing this future where Cardano is gonna actually bring utility to Bitcoin. People that have Bitcoin, you know, there's trillions of dollars in Bitcoin, they are going to be able to use Cardano as a smart contract layer for Bitcoin. If you think about it, you know, Bitcoin's UTXO, Cardano is extended UTXO. It is the perfect match in heaven. And Bitcoiners do want smart contracts. A lot of people say they don't. I actually disagree. I don't think that we would have seen billions and billions of dollars get lost from people depositing their Bitcoin in Celsius or other platforms like Celsius to take out loans on them, right? So we're, we're heading into this future where Bitcoin is gonna be at the center of finance and Cardano is going to be there to extend Bitcoin. So this video is gonna be about that. We're also gonna talk a little bit about governance. I'm gonna give you guys an update for people that haven't been paying attention, but all in all, it's gonna be an amazing video. If you can, leave a like on this video if you like it, leave a comment if you have any questions. And uh, as always, we'll, we'll you know do something for people that make it to the end of the video. So let's get jump right into it. Okay, so here's the big announcement. It's not just hype, bosses. We did it. This is from Bitcoin OS, a company that is trying to bring Bitcoin to Cardano and Cardano native tokens back on Bitcoin. They're trying to do a lot. I have a podcast coming out tomorrow with the founder of Bitcoin OS, right? So make sure you guys tune into that if you want to learn more. You know, I'm not sponsored or anything. I think this content is just pretty cool. On May 4th, we successfully demoed the first bridgeless transfer of Bitcoin between Bitcoin and Cardano. Here's what happened. We have this nice little graphic here. You can see one Bitcoin you know, being brought over here. And then this is Bitcoin OS, which is hooked up to the Bitcoin blockchain. Using BitSnark, they converted this one Bitcoin into one XBTC, and then there's a bridgeless cross-chain transaction here, right? And then this, you know, one XBTC is actually on the Cardano blockchain, right? And the way they did that is they actually submitted a proof within a UTXO that's on Cardano. So what is a UTXO? I don't want to get, you know, too into this or make this too complicated, but imagine, you know, I send you some money. If I send you 10 ADA, you're going to have a UTXO in your wallet from me. And then if you go to send somebody else 10 ADA, your wallet can grab that UTXO and send it. So by storing a proof of the Bitcoin blockchain and a proof of this transaction here, they're suggesting that you can have Bitcoin on Cardano without a bridge. And you know, this is a pretty big deal. A lot of, you know, Bitcoin that we've seen on the past, you know, last time I checked, there was over $10 billion of value on Ethereum uh, with bridged Bitcoin, you know, that, that is essentially controlled by a multi-sig wallet, right? Which means, you know, let's say there's five people, you need five of those guys to sign uh, to get all of the Bitcoin out of this, this uh, you know, wallet that's, you know, being used to bridge to the other chain. So, you know, this is a big milestone, in my opinion. And, um, you know, first the, the boss team locked one Bitcoin on Bitcoin L1 using our BitSnark protocol and then wrapped it into a new unchained token called XBTC. XBTC is an industry first. It's non-custodial, which is that part that I was telling you about the multi-sig. Cryptographic, programmable, and lives directly on Bitcoin, much like WETH on Ethereum. WETH is what everyone uses on Ethereum if you're using any smart contracts, if you, if you didn't know that. The next part was revolutionary. Boss sends its one XBTC from Bitcoin wallet directly to Sundial's Cardano wallet. This transaction was bridgeless. No custodian or vault of any kind intermediated it. So Sundial, they're building a, you know, a layer two, a Bitcoin specific layer two uh, for Cardano. Uh, which is exciting. They're using Midgard, which I'm a big fan of uh, Midgard. I'm also looking forward to see what Sundial brings to the table. At this point, XBTC lives as a Cardano UTXO spendable by a Cardano private key. 
So, you know, I was talking earlier about this idea. So what you'd be able to do is grab that UTXO with the Bitcoin in it and spend it and send it to somebody else. To prove it, we sent one XPTC from Sundial's Cardano wallet to Handle's Cardano wallet. After that came another mind-blowing transaction. We sent the one XPTC from Handle's Cardano wallet back to Boss's Bitcoin wallet. So, you know, essentially you have Ada Handle here, they're receiving the Bitcoin, and then now they're sending this back to the boss is Bitcoin wallet, right? And then they unwrapped this BTC, reclaiming one BTC again. Thanks to BitSnark, the same technology underpinning Grail, our trustless Bitcoin bridge, uh, all XBTC remains safely backed and redeemable and secured with cryptographic integrity instead of trust. So, yeah, this is exciting news, uh, to be honest with you guys. I mean, what you're witnessing is one person, or really a group of people, moving Bitcoin from Bitcoin to the Cardano chain. And then once we have this Bitcoin on Cardano, they're going to be able to, you know, use MinSwap or use you know, any of the existing platforms on Cardano with Bitcoin, right? And you know they're doing this with Cardano as the first chain. And you guys are gonna learn more from the podcast that I'm doing directly with him tomorrow, but it's exciting news. And I will caveat this with, you know, does this mean our bags are gonna go to the moon tomorrow? If you remember what happened in 2021, when smart contracts launched on Cardano, it took some time for tooling to be created around the new software that was Plutus. So it's gonna be the same thing here. It's gonna take time for wallets to integrate Bitcoin. It's gonna take time for wallet to, to integrate uh, you know, the, the new token standard that they're presenting. You know, some alpha here, I actually had a call with uh, Ivan, and uh, let me pull, pull that up real quick. So I had a call with one of the developers uh, you know, with Bitcoin OS, and um, let me get to that here. We're, we're going to have an airdrop uh, as well, a boss token airdrop. Um, so Ivan here, he is actually designing this new token standard for uh, Bitcoin. And he is suggesting to me that you can actually have these tokens on Bitcoin and Cardano. And this, you know, this Bitcoin transaction here is only the first token to ever do this. Whereas, you know, if you already have an existing CNT, you know, what he is stating to me is that you will be able to bring that CNT to Bitcoin and bring the CNT that's on Bitcoin back to Cardano, essentially connecting Bitcoin and Cardano without a bridge, right? Is This is all very exciting. And, uh, you know, I'm going to do my best to, to kind of push this stuff forward. Um, you know, these things take time. You know, it's, it's, this stuff doesn't happen over, overnight. You know, development isn't easy. You know, development takes time, especially when you're building things that are secure. And, you know, I truly believe that Cardano smart contracts are more secure than Ethereum smart contract as long as you have good developers developing those smart contracts. If you take that into account with, you know, the deterministic transactions, you can see how Cardano can eat the TVL that is Bitcoin, while Ethereum gets left behind because of the insecure smart contracts. You know, Vitalik just, you know, mentioned a post. Uh, he, he just posted something talking about, you know, how, uh, you know, UTXO is important. And, you know, he kind of even mentions about bringing uh, Ethereum over to UTXO. So exciting times. And uh, yeah, let's go on to the next topic. So... You guys can actually get an airdrop of the boss token. As I mentioned earlier, I'm not sponsored by these guys. I think what they're doing is pretty cool. Does that mean you should invest your your house or your life savings into them? No, I didn't say that. You know, I don't know if the token price is going to go up. I don't know if this airdrop is going to be worth your time. However, I will take my own time to give you this information. According, or no, not according, announcing our final phase of the boss community's airdrop. Essentially, if you're a holder of one of these projects, you know, ADA handle, fluid tokens, if you're a delegator of Bloom, if you use, you know, hold the min token, etc., you may be eligible for an airdrop. All you have to do is you have to join their Discord here. 
Once you join their Discord, you have to verify yourself, make sure you're a real person, and then in the general chat, you can type in forward slash verify and then link. And then you can paste your address in there. You know, keep in mind, you are pasting your wallet address in there. You could be doxing yourself to your Discord account. You're doing this on your own accord. I'm just giving you the information to do so if you want. This token could be worth nothing. It could be worth the world. You never know. I'm just trying to teach you guys how to do this. So, you know, if you're a delegator of any of the Bloom Pools, you guys can claim this airdrop by following the steps that I just mentioned. And um, yeah, you know, if you want some free tokens, there you go. If not, I completely understand. You know, airdrops uh, sometimes are great and sometimes are useless. However, the team behind Bitcoin OS seems solid so far. Um, yeah, so get your airdrop. Governance has been going down on Cardano, and I don't want to spend too much time on this. I think a lot of people are almost bored, but I want to make sure everyone's informed about what's happening in Cardano governance, right? So the last two Chang hard forks essentially brought the ability for anyone to submit a budget proposal. You can essentially submit something to the treasury right now with 100,000 ADA. You could get on there and you could say, hey, I want 5 million ADA to go accomplish this, to go build this open source software, to go you know, host events in, in Africa. You, know, you could do whatever. And then you have to reach 67% approval by all of the D reps in the Cardano ecosystem for your budget to be approved. You know, 67% is quite a lot. That means all of the ADA that's staked to DREPs, you have to get 67% of it. So with that being said, if you haven't delegated your ADA to a DREP, make sure you delegate to a DREP. Make sure you register your own keys and become a DREP if you have the time uh, to educate yourself on this. I am a DREP. I've spent a lot of time over the past month, you know, the past couple of months, educating myself, voting on various proposals, so that I could serve Cardano. You know, there's no money in it. It's not like being a stake pool operator where you get a fee from transactions or a fee from onboarding users and getting them to delegate. You get nothing. You know, the, the goal or the incentive that you have is to make sure Cardano is a better blockchain in the future. So, you know, because that 67% threshold was so high, you know, what Intersect has decided to do is to give people the ability in the Cardano community to submit a budget proposal. And all of these budget proposals would be bundled into essentially one budget, right? Almost like omnibus spending. And, you know, what you can do is as a DREP, you can log into this, you know, tool called Ecclesia. Uh, you know, sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. And then in that tool, you could vote yes or no on individual proposals. So uh, to be honest with you, I, I absolutely hated this. You know, it, it kind of felt like I was stabbing myself in the stomach a hundred times. There was 198 different proposals essentially saying, hey, you know, I need, you know, 2 million ADA to do this, or I need 1 million ADA to do this. And the D-reps all around the world were, you know, given the task to vote yes or no on these proposals. And, you know, that's what I did. I went in there. I voted yes or no on the proposals based on what I believe to be good for Cardano in the long-term future. You know, I was, you know, I would say I was a conservative D-Rep. I didn't think that we should be spending as much as, you know, some people believe that we should be spending. There was a proposal that was passed called uh, the NCL. And the NCL stated that in 2025, 350 million ADA could be spent out of the treasury. However, that doesn't mean that we have to spend 350 million ADA, right? So, you know, the budget came out to about, I think, 270 million ADA. That's what was approved. So, you know, you had to get 51 or over 50% approval by DREPs. And then that doesn't mean you're funded. Now, all of those, you know, greater than 50% were pulled together. And then now that's going to be presented to the DREPs again as a whole and then that budget needs to get 67% to, for it to pass, right? So, you know, again, I didn't want this to be too long and boring. I want to summarize this for you people that, you know, have delegated to me or other D reps, uh, you know, just so you know what's going on because a lot of this stuff is complicated. It's happening fast and okay, right here, about 280 million. 
So this includes approximately 75 million ADA aligned with potential ecosystem enablers and resources like Catalyst on X, Builder DAO, and Intersex open source work. So what they're saying here is about 280 million ADA was approved currently. DREPs haven't approved this on chain yet. So that doesn't mean 280 million is going to get dumped tomorrow. It's going to go to DREPs. They have to vote yes on it. And then Intersect here is suggesting that 75 million of this ADA is actually you know, going to be given back to the community in other ways, right? Like through Catalyst, you know, through BuilderDAO, uh, et cetera, right? And, um, you know, it's going to be milestone based from my understanding, you know, just like Catalyst. So we're not going to see all of this ADA, you know, dumped at the same time all on the chain. And, um, you know, I have seen whales, you know, in the past few months, I think buy up a you know, good bit more ADA uh, than, than it's here. And this is, you know, ultimately the bet on Cardano. You know, if you look at the trade-offs between Bitcoin, Ethereum and Cardano, you know, this is what sets Cardano apart. You know, the ability for on-chain governance to fund entities to take care of the chain, you know, to push the chain forward. And, you know, the Ethereum Foundation, they've been selling a lot. Uh, you know, Bitcoin developers, I assume, have to sell some Bitcoin uh, to keep the chain moving. And the bet on Cardano is the bet that, you know, this type of on-chain governance and funding of entities is actually going to bring more growth in the future instead of less. And that's why it's important for DREPs to be there to actually check, you know, some of the people that are coming in and asking for funds from the treasury. And the final piece that I had on this, I wanted to uh, pull this up here. So there's been another budget proposal submitted. This is separate from the budget that I was just talking about. And they're asking for 1.5 million ADA here. And this is to fund an alternative node. So right now we all use Cardano node. Uh, Cardano node is what you use to submit your transactions to the blockchain. Using uh, Cardano node, you know, this is the only node that, that we have. You know, so what they're suggesting here is let's build a alternative node uh, and that actually, you know, what people suggest is that decentralizes Cardano because not everyone's re relying on one team that's building one node, whereas with this proposal, if it is funded, there'll be a new team that's working on a new node to add some, you know, essentially some redundancy that increases decentralization within the Cardano community. So, you know, you can see here, Charles supports it. I've always been the fan of a Rust node. And, uh, you know, if you're a DREP, you can get on there. Uh, and vote yes uh, if you want to or not. So, yeah, um, you know, as far as uh, Atrium goes, you know, we've been spinning up our smart contracts on mainnet. We've been getting the site uh, live on mainnet. And, you know, it's been a long time coming. We've been working for, uh, you know, multiple years on this project. You know, I've invested a lot of money into it and um, I'm excited to see it come to fruition. I think it's going to be a huge value add to the Cardano community in terms of accessibility, education, prettiness, and uh, it's gonna bring a fun gamified experience uh, to the blockchain that I think a lot of people are gonna like. So you'll hear more about that over the next uh, the next few months. We'll have a date for you guys when it's ready. And uh, thanks for tuning in. If you made it to the end of the video, comment intersect uh, down below. If you have any questions, you know, let me know. I try to keep it quick and brief. I didn't say everything that's happened in governance because it, it would take a one hour podcast and it would bore you guys to death. So I had to give you the Bitcoin stuff and then a little airdrop hype video. And then here's the boring governance stuff. So yeah, thanks for tuning in. Um, happy Tuesday. I hope you guys all have a good rest of your day and goodbye.